welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, psychotherapy, neuropsychology, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who's been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here, I discuss and describe lots of topics, concepts and theories from psychology to neurosciences uh, the best as I can for you to understand and for you to learn something about it. So, in this video I will start to show you how to perform an uh, one sample t-test. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. I used these four manuals to develop uh, the, today's video and if you want to check them please see the video description below where you can find the link to uh, its specific uh, domain, ok? So, uh, let's go! So, one sample t-test, it's a statistical test that it's used to explore if a sample mean is statistically different from a known or an hypothesized population mean. Typically, it's a sample mean that it's used, that it's against, that it's tested against a test value and this test value is an hypothesized value of a mean in the population. This test is considered a parametric test because it has uh, lots of assumptions. And also, um, uh, one uh, specific thing about this test is that it's not indicated for one uh, more than one group. Okay, uh, if you want to perform a, a comparison of a mean value to an hypothesized value, you use a sample test. But to uh, to utilize this, you must use only one group. Okay. So let's see the assumptions. Uh, the test variable must be continuous, uh, it must be a, an independence of observations, the, the sample must be collected from a random pairing, it is assumed uh, a normal distribution, also the homogeneity of the variances is only necessary and we also have the assumption that can't be outliers in the distribution. So let's go to our hypothetical research problem. Uh, symptomatology tends to be higher in clinical sam samples than in non-clinical samples. However, this assumption must be explored. Uh, symptomatology, uh, uh, when we talk about symptomatology, we talk about the mean, uh, the mean response in a, a given questionnaire. Uh, so, we are talking here is that symptomatology is higher in clinical sample than in normal population. Our new hypothesis is the absence of effect, so no difference, and the age one is uh, difference between means. Okay? So now let's jump to uh, the SPSS environment. So now we are here in the SPSS and uh, we have here our variable symptomatology and uh, we will test if symptomatology is different from normal population, an hypothetized value of normal population or uh, not. Okay? So how can we perform this test? We go to here to analyze, compare means and, oh, sorry, and is here, one sample t-test, we click on them, oh, I've already had selected uh, symptomatology here, okay, but you can just drag it along right here, okay, so I am using um, this value, this is an arbitrary value, okay, just to test, and Go to options, we have our confidence interval, 95%, exclude cases analysis by analysis, we can continue, ok, let's do it. So our output shows that, oh ok, we look here, ok, 
the significant level, significance level gives us uh, 0 0.000, which means that we must reject our null hypothesis. So, uh, I think that we have an, um, a statistical effect uh, when we compare the means of our sample to the uh, hypothetized value of 1.7, that is a statistical inference for population. So, here we have the t-test, which is uh, less than 17, okay? But here, this is the f, it's the degrees of freedom of our statistical test, but here is the significance of the test. So, here we have a significant result, which means that uh, we can now look, first we can look here to our hypothesis, so, can look that uh, symptomatology is higher in clinical sample than in normal population. So, there is a significant difference between the means in our sample and that hypothetized value of 1.7 that it's an hypothetical value for a normal population. So, we reject the null hypothesis and we accept the age um, one hypothesis, okay? So, I hope that you enjoyed the contents of today and don't forget to see the video description regarding today's theme to look to the references that I think that are very useful to understand these concepts. Also, if you like what I'm doing here, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. If you want to say something about this, these topics, please use the comment section below to express your mind. Welcome to the Mind Brain Talks, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!